Well, I've known about the atrocities committed against humanity, especially children, the planet, and the animal kingdom. I sense the shock and the trauma that most people who up to this point have been blissfully ignorant will be so severe that many will either leave their bodies or descend into a deep downward spiral of agony. I get the feeling this is going to be a very large swath of the U.S. population and beyond. Amid such trauma, I can't see many people showing up for work. This has many repercussions, of course, emotionally, economically, etc. What do you see is going to be done to help the people heal and recover? Will there be trauma centers created? No. Will the government provide the U.S. population with an immediate basic monthly income for a short transition period to ensure that people have the proper time to grieve and heal without the stress of having to show up to a potentially tedious job if they're struggling? No. Lastly, how would you recommend we support those you know who are so deeply asleep on both sides of the political divide as well as those who still project all their hatred, frustrations, and discontent with their own lives onto Trump. Maybe these questions and their answers could be of use to others. Thank you for your time and sharing. So let's say, uh, let me go back to the beginning. Um, the darker forces are other people, okay, period. Whether they're earth humans or humans from somewhere else, they're just other people. There are certain, I'll say, rules. The nature of reality is important here. There are certain rules that operate around holding love and light versus holding hatred and evil or darkness. Okay, people in the darkness are automatically, they don't want to be anywhere near that light. They try to stamp it out. People in the light try to stamp out the dark. What happens? They end up taking each other out. When you go about your business in the light, you leave that dark alone, it fades. That's just the rule. Everything grows with consciousness. So the more tension you put on the dark forces trying to fight them, the more they, the more they thrive. That, I know that runs counter to what a lot of people want to hear, but that's the bottom line. Everything grows with consciousness. Okay, yes, there have been some pretty awful uh, um, atrocities that have been committed and people will be angry and they'll grieve. I can't see them showing up for work either. I think that people are going to be angry enough and, the, and there's a spectrum here of how, how much anger is actually expressed and how much of it is used as change energy and how much of it, it doesn't get expressed at all or used at all, it just takes down the person holding the anger. So that remains to be seen yet. Um, <clears throat> I think a large population or large swath of the US population is going to be somewhat traumatized if that information comes out. You know, I, I don't know if we can move ahead without that information coming up, and I don't know if we can move ahead with it. So, you know, time is going to have to be the deciding factor here. Um, we will be the deciding factor as well. Um, in terms of uh, people showing up for work, I don't, what I see is that people are just like, the, the attitude, and I don't know how long this will prevail, but for a time, and I've seen this repeatedly, the attitude is the whole thing has to come down. The whole thing has to come down. Nobody is willing to set up, and I've talked about that a little bit or mentioned that or I tried to plant the seed that that's what we may be facing. Um, and But when we get to that point where the, we say the whole thing has to come down, 
what's going to happen is we're going to see that somebody's offering another entire system and that it's coming together rapidly and that it offers hope and it offers cooperation and it offers all the things that we have been missing for 50 years. So I, I'm not worried about people not showing up for work. Is there any other way to deal with the corporations than to ignore them? I don't see any other peaceful way other than to ignore them. Everything about them. If we're ignoring the corporations, what are we doing to support and help one another? What I've seen over and over is that massive amounts or numbers of people come together to help one another through the whole period and the whole corporate thing just kind of fades into the background fades whole new systems get set up whole new mindset in operation um trauma centers you know my opinion of trauma centers um, is not very good. I don't mean to take away anything from people working in trauma centers, but when you focus on the trauma, it grows. It becomes entrenched. You can't get past it. It's, there's a woman who came here to speak years ago, um, here to the farm, when it was still an operating learning center, um, and she was, um, her name was Michelle O'Donnell, and she had written a book about, um, she had written a couple books. One of them was something about a dragon. I forget what the name of the other one was, but I remembered her story. Um, she was a nurse. She had learned everything the hard way. Oh my gosh. She gives birth to this child who has something pretty wrong with her second child. She, and the child is obviously defective from the moment of birth. When her husband finds out that they have this child who has something seriously wrong with it, Michelle's still in the hospital. She's just given birth. She gets this overwhelming news about this child who is um, got this something terrible wrong with her brain and, and her husband's like, I'm out of here. He walks out. She's left with a child. She doesn't have a career at that point. She became a nurse later. Um, but she was very Christian in her approach and very much believing in something. And, and so she hung on to that belief and long story short, um, she was offered all kinds of, you could join this group. So you could belong to this trauma thing. You could belong to that or be a part of this support group um, where everybody talked about how miserable or how, how they were dealing with this difficulty or whatever. And she said, no, thank you. And she continued to, the child couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't, didn't do anything. Um, I don't know if it was, she was, what, what the issue was. But um, she carried that child around with her every day and talked to her like she was normal and fed her and, as, you know, hand fed her till she really got quite old. I think she was two or two and a half. And one day she's holding this child in her arm and she was going to put something in the child's mouth. And the child spoke for the first time and said, you don't need to feed me, mother. I can do that for myself. And Michelle almost fell over. What she had been doing, unknowing to, unbeknownst to her own self, was treating that child normally, allowing the development that didn't happen in utero to finish, believing that this child would be healed, that God would heal this child. God is that intelligent light within us that is listening, that is responding to us, that is shaping itself in the way we want to see it. And that child is today, um, I think in her 30s, she's a lawyer. And, and, you know, the big lesson there, 
um, Michelle had a dream. Um, and in the dream, somewhere along, she was walking along this ridge of these mountains and the pathway along the top of these mountains was just lined with dragons and monkeys that were just rawr, rawr, rawr. and um, every time she looked at the monkeys or the dragons um, she got caught up in that and she discovered that if she just kept her eyes straight on the path and just kept walking they couldn't touch her only what you put your attention on has the ability to engage your energy and grow using your energy. And so it became a very, very powerful lesson. And she, Michelle, I think, I don't know, I think she's still going around teaching. She eventually became a registered nurse, um, has been involved in healing. I, I can't say how many small miracles. Um, she talked about those miracles when she was here. It's like, whoa. Um, it just, you know, just because she is very absolutely confident, she keeps her eye on what she wants to happen. What is, that's why I say, what do you want? <laughs> know what you want. So it, trauma centers, no. <laughs> I'm just mindful because I know that in many uh, new age and healing types of environment, it, it's very much um, talked about that to not see the negative, to just, but there's a difference between what you're talking about and just pretending that something is not there. And so right. how do you find the balance in that? And to say, well, like with everything that's going on in the world and, you know, and all the trafficking that's going on, yeah. because what you're talking about, the, the, the story with the dragon makes a lot of sense, but then how do you find the balance being behind saying, I know what's coming, I can see it, but I will keep my eye on the road. Okay. My question. Oh, yeah. So let's pretend that you are um, hunting coyotes. Coyotes are people who kidnap children and feed them into the system for all kinds of awful stuff. So um, if you think that the system is too big or too powerful um, and that you could never, you wouldn't be able to do any good or you wouldn't be able to overcome the power of that system out there of hunting children, then you best not try to be a coyote hunter. Um, you, but when you keep your eye on, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm going for that. I, and you know, you understand, you recognize that they're there. It's not that you're pretending they're not there. It's that you're deciding this is where I stand. And I'm not giving you anything. I'm not giving you any attention. I'm not letting you get me distracted from my intent. And that's how you move through. Or, you know, if you're not a coyote hunter, maybe you're some other thing. Um, you know, or some other, you have some other role to play. You know what the risks are, but you keep your eye on the goal and you get there. And it's, it's uh, the power of focus and the power of will. I'm here. I'm focused here. You know, yeah, I know that crap is happening, but I'm focused here. I'm rescuing kids, period or I'm making a change in how this organization works or, you know, or whatever. I'm rescuing this animal. I know the ice is thin, you know, and you're talking to the ice, hold together. You know, don't take, just hold together. You don't even say, don't take me or the animal or, or you know, I'm afraid of falling through. You don't talk like that. All you're focused on is you know that that animal can be rescued and that the whole system, life and, and the I am and the ice and the trees around the pond or the lake or the river, or whatever, all of that is in support of life. And you are in support of life at that moment. So you can't waver. That's the bottom line. So next question, will the government provide the US population with immediate basic monthly income for a short transition period to ensure that people have the proper time to grieve without the stress of having to show up to a potentially tedious job if they're struggling? 
the way that I've seen it is no, we don't, we don't have a government to be able to give money anywhere. The governance system that's taking shape is of the people, by the people, for the people in a very real and local way. And everybody, it's your support network that it will help you through. Um, everything, mother nature is absolutely infallible in terms of making sure you have what you need. If you are in China right now, mother nature is busy doing something else. I think she's cleaning up some mistakes that have been made. Um, or she's revealing some mistakes that have been made. So it, anyway, back to the, um, I do not see universal basic income. I see that that dangles out there for a short time. Um, but if people start grabbing on to that, um, they aren't gonna be focused on what do I need to do to make sure I'm okay two months from now, six months from now, a year from now. How do I set up my life so that I can be somewhat self-sufficient and interdependent with these other people. If you know how to grow green beans and somebody else grows strawberries, maybe you trade. If you know how to make mittens and somebody else knows how to weave fabric, you know, maybe you trade. If you know how to fix lawnmowers and somebody else knows how to make lawnmowers run on water engines or something like that, maybe you trade. Um, whatever, if you have a junkyard in your backyard and maybe that it's been, the city is threatening to give you a fine if you don't clean up the junk, offer it to people. What can they do with it, um, et cetera. A lot of the earth I think is really going to um, get cleaned up over the next two decades, a lot of it. Um, so I, the government, um, the government that appears to be in place right now is not. It's mostly illusion. It's a, it's a shell or it's a, it's a movie theater. It's a movie set, you know, it's actors on a stage. Do not be fooled by that. There's no real power there and there's nothing to hang on to. And that whole group that's, you know, in power pretending, they don't have any money. The real thing that we have to be asking ourselves is how do I survive? Those who don't ask that are not going to survive. And, you know, some of the military people that I've been involved with for a long time have said point blank, and I was very upset. They've said, we can't save everybody. We're not even gonna try. We can't save everyone. You have to be willing to save yourself. And I think I've resisted that for a long time. And I think that that's one of the hard truths that we may have to look at. So my own position has been, come on, come on, wake up, wake up. This is where we're going. Um, and we're gonna be able to create something brand new. So, um, how would we support those deeply asleep um, as well as those who still project all their hatred and their frustrations and discontent? Um, I've seen two things involving that. Neither one of them what I want to see. One is that those who are still deeply asleep stay asleep and go deeper asleep. In other words, they may not survive. Um, those who are projecting hatred attract others projecting hatred. They take themselves out. Who's left? It's the people that are willing to work. It's the people that are willing to think. It's the people that are willing to see the handwriting on the wall. It's the people willing to take responsibility. And that's where we're headed. And that's going to be a test the, this year is the year of the test. Um, and the test is the survival test. So um, it's a renewal test. We're not quite to the renewal. Maybe toward the end of the year, we'll see some of that renewal. Um, but um, yeah, 
Trump is not the enemy. Yeah, the Trump, the enemy is, is within. Confront that enemy within. What are you doing with your consciousness? What are you doing with your love? How are you sitting on that love? You know, how are you expressing that? Those are the questions that have to be asked. So hard answers. Yes.